Hey guys, look what just arrived today. If there's been one phone that I've been super excited to review this year, it's this one, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2. So let's not waste any more time. Let's unbox it and take it out into the real world. Fancy phone, fancy packaging. You start by sliding this cover off and peeling both sides apart as if they were doors that swung open. Inside, a card that says, change the shape of the future. Let me know what you guys think. Is the Fold 2 the future of phones? Leave me a message in the comments section below. Next up is this box with the user guide and SIM ejector tool. And if you pull on this tab, you get the Fold 2 with a laundry list of care instructions printed on this plastic wrap. Let's go over them as they're important. One, do not poke the screen with hard objects. Two, when folding the device, make sure there's nothing caught in between both screens. Three, the device is not dust or waterproof, unfortunately. Four, do not remove the screen protector film. And last but not least, the phone has magnets, so keep your phone away from things like credit cards or, if you have them, medical implants. All right, what else is in here? A 25-watt power brick, and last but not least, a USB-C to C cable. Moshi is correct to point it out. The original Fold came with Galaxy Buds in the box. A pair of Buds Live would have been a great addition as well. If you've got extra cash lying around, the 3299 Thom Brown edition comes with two free cases, Buds Live, Galaxy Watch 3, and three watch bands. Samsung also sells a leather case and an Aramid standing cover separately. It's not in the box, but you do get membership to the Galaxy Z Premier service, which comes with on-demand concierge support, one-time accidental display damage warranty, a membership to Founders Card, and access to a prepared meal from a Michelin star restaurant, and access to some elite golf program. All right, let's unwrap this phone and set it up. Notice this green protector over here. Samsung says it can be removed and replaced, but best to have it done at Samsung stores and authorized service centers. Six hours later. Okie dokie, now let's take a closer look at the new Fold. Samsung has taken all the things we love about the Note 20 Ultra and applied it to the Z Fold 2's design language. Not just this mystic bronze color. It's more flat and angular in some places, with a brushed metal finish on its frame and a frosted matte finish on its back. What kind of glass? Well, it's Gorilla Glass Victus up front, Gorilla Glass 6 on the back, and UTG or Ultra Thin Glass on the inside. Jussel Lu asks, how does it feel? I like how it feels in the hands and how much more elegant it looks. But this form factor, whether closed or unfolded, takes some getting used to. Jacopo asks, what about the crease? It's still there, but it's really just the nature of the material used for the inner screen. But to be honest, it doesn't really bother me much. Samsung offers the Fold 2 in bronze and black, and in some markets, you can even customize the hinge with an accent color, either black, silver, gold, red, and blue. I've already pre-ordered mine in black and blue, of course. Customization doesn't add to the cost of the phone, but it adds a five-week delay. So in case you want your phone on September 18th, don't customize. Here in the US, the phone retails for $19.99. The biggest, most obvious change from the Fold 1 to the Fold 2 is its larger cover display. Unlike on the original, the entire front panel is all screen, measuring 6.2 inches diagonally. When used this way, it feels narrower and thicker compared to your average smartphone, but things like texting or scrolling through Instagram are totally doable now. You can now watch videos on it too, and if you start something on the cover display, when you open the phone up, you can pick up where you left off. And now that we've gotten it open, notice how the weird selfie camera module is gone completely. All that's left is a punch hole cutout for the selfie camera. The Fold 2 is a tad bit shorter but wider, and the bezels have also been reduced. So the display is bigger too, 7.6 inches diagonally. Perfect for things like playing some games that support this aspect ratio, navigating using Google Maps, or reading a book using the Kindle app. Oh, and like on the Z Flip, the hinge can now stay open at a 90 degree angle. Flex mode, it's called. So you can do things like prop it up for Google Duo calls, 
watching YouTube videos with only half the screen, or use it like you would a mini laptop. What are the differences between the two displays? Apart from the obvious size, aspect ratio, and material differences, the covered display is Super AMOLED, while the main display is Dynamic AMOLED, meaning it adds support for HDR10+, and has lower blue light emissions. In terms of resolution, we're looking at HD+, and QXGA+, respectively. It's not called Quad HD+, because of its squarish aspect ratio, but it's definitely more high-res than Full HD. The cover display has a 60Hz refresh rate, while the main display has a 120Hz refresh rate at full resolution, with adaptive display adjusting it based on which app you're in. Over the course of the next few days, I look forward to being able to test both of the phone's displays. I want to know if I can survive exclusively off of this cover display and if I can really fully maximize the big inner display. As per usual, Samsung has included a whole bunch of multitasking features, like being able to have three windows open at a time and shortcuts to launch your favorite app combinations. As this is supposed to be one of the best phones that Samsung currently has on offer, the Fold 2 is packed with top-notch specs, including a Snapdragon 865 Plus processor, no matter where you buy it. Yep, that's right, there's only one variant powered by Snapdragon 865 Plus. There's also 256 gigabytes of UFS 3.1 storage, 12 gigabytes of RAM, and 5G support. I managed to get 5G service from my rooftop, but not the speeds I enjoyed during my afternoon with the Note 20 Ultra at Bryant Park. The phone packs a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, actually two cells that add up to 4,500. In my day of heavy use setting up the phone and using it out and about, I managed to get it to zero, close to five hours of screen on time. Using its bundled charger, a 10 minute charge filled it up to 13%, a 30 minute top up, got it to 35%. The Fold 2 supports wireless charging and reverse wireless charging. More detailed battery and charging tests to come in my review video. The Galaxy Z Fold 2 has three rear cameras from top to bottom, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with a 123 degree field of view, a 12 megapixel wide angle camera, same as the one on the S20 and S20 Plus, and finally, a 12 megapixel telephoto camera with 2x optical zoom. Gavin Phillips asks, how big is the camera bump? Bigger than on the Note 20, but not as monstrous as on the Ultra. I know you want to see camera comparisons, but you'll have to wait for our full review. In the meantime, take a look at some photos we shot around Brooklyn today. We start with the sun overhead. Nothing is overexposed. Colors are vibrant, the sky is blue, and that depth of field, oh so creamy. This is the same wide angle camera that's on the S20 and S20 Plus, so expect the results to be nothing short of excellent. In the shade, it's equally as good, capturing plenty of detail from the texture of the brick buildings, paint chipping off the steel frames of the elevated train track, and the cars and shop houses off in the distance. When a phone can reliably take great photos, it allows you to experiment and be artsy. I love how both of these photos turned out. We took a walk in the park and shot these photos of Chai. The full body portrait was shot using the wide angle camera, showing off its HDR abilities that kicked in and compensated for this against the light framing. We switch on live focus to blur out her background using the telephoto lens. The cutouts aren't so bad. Here's another set of portraits of Chai shot against a colorful backdrop. The first photo uses the wide angle lens, the second the 2X zoom lens, and the third using live focus mode. Which photo is your favorite? Dusk sets in and I shot this moody photo of the JMZ train stop using the telephoto camera. We make a side trip to the supermarket. This next sample was shot indoors with no natural light. And despite light bulbs of varying color temperatures, white balance is pretty spot on. It's finally dark out, time for some night shots. This first one doesn't even use night mode, but is still pretty impressive as are these night mode samples from my roof deck, one using the wide angle and ultra wide angle cameras respectively. 
Finally, my favorite extreme low light test, or the easiest one to do. These shelves of my dark bathroom with only spillover light from my living room as a light source. While I can't wait to go out and shoot more comparison photos with the Z Fold 2, I will say that in my day of using the phone for photos, I really didn't find myself wanting anymore. Which brings me to Ilpo hate glass question. There's no 108 megapixels. Does it matter? Nope, the 12 megapixel sensor does an amazing job. So is the Galaxy Z Fold 2 your gadget match? As you probably guessed, as soon as the cameras stop rolling, I will go back to reviewing this phone and that video should be ready real soon. But as always, I want you to be a part of it. I know you have questions, so leave them for me in the comments section below. Subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we post that review video and many more like it. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff. I'll be posting sample photos and other tidbits from my review process on Twitter and on Instagram. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video. I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.